Hello, and welcome to my review of and also my review of All right, first the Snow Peak stove. It comes in a little container and it's pretty handy. The stove just pulls on out of the container as you can see and it has the small valve here. All right. The way this stove works is you just fold open the little arms. Now this is the manual stove. It doesn't have an igniter, so you have to light it yourself. I didn't spend the the extra money to get the igniter, but as you'll see, it's quite easy to light. And now the pot, as you can see, come in a nice little mesh bag here with a pincher, and you open it up, and uh, inside we've got uh, a lid, which is seems to be good quality. I mean, it's not extremely thick, but uh, it's light and decent quality. And the second lid, smaller lid, and they all fit together, as you can see, inside of each other. So I'll take the bag off here, and you'll be able to see how they all fit together. First pan, and each of these pans have a little fold out handles, all right, so you can grip them. And we'll see when we get it on the stove how well they work. All right, so that's the first pan. Second pan is your bigger one, a larger one. And Last one is your small little frying pan, okay? Same thing with the handles. But all of these seem to have pretty good quality non-stick on here. Um, we'll see, you know, how long they last the non-stick. This is the first time I've used the pans and probably about the third time I've used the stove. So, as far as the stove goes, I have some experience, but the pans, this will be the first time. All right, let's set up the stove. Now, setting up the stove, you're gonna need your fuel, of course. Now, this fuel here is a propane isobutane mixture. I just bought it at a sporting goods store. I think it was around seven bucks. But the great thing about this is you can see on this stove here you have a seal a rubber seal that works really well we can screw it on here and use however much we need and then when you're finished you just take it off and it reseals so you can bring it to the next trip and I can feel the fuel in here there's probably probably three quarters in this uh, this can so what you do is you just take the little stove and simply screw it right onto the top of the can. It fits on there really nice. You want to make sure that the valve is closed when you screw on the stove for obvious reasons. Gas is going to spew out once you get it sealed in there. All right, and you just screw it on like so. Finger tight. And there's your stove onto cut take that again. And there's your stove sealed onto your can. Now that we have the stove screwed onto the can, I got my lighter. Very basic lighter. I also used a small like a Bic lighter and I had no problems but I brought this this time. So what you're going to do is just turn on the gas and there we go. Now it's lit. So you can adjust it by of course the valve here. And you can hear that the wind affecting the flame. Turn that off. 
they actually have a uh, wind resistant like a uh, circular aluminum of some sort that goes around here I've seen for about ten dollars I haven't purchased it but it might be a good now I'm gonna boil one cup of water so I can cook some oatmeal so I've put a cup of water in the small saucepan all right I'm gonna light my stove simply open the flame all the way and then place your pan right on top the flame all the way out now let's see how long it takes to boil started my watch there and as you can see we already got small little bubbles on the bottom it's only one cup of water but it seems to be working pretty well Now you can hear the flame down in there. I got it turned all the way up. Right now I'm at 45 seconds. There's one minute right there. We're almost at boiling. All right, right there. One minute, 35 seconds. Pretty quick, pretty quick. Okay, we've got it boiling. Let's add the oatmeal. I really had to turn the flame almost to off it was starting to boil over so I turned the turned the valve down quite a bit and you you can see it's still really boiling so it's on almost as low as it goes without me cutting off the fuel to the flame so I mean the stove is definitely puts out some power. Now let's look at the let's look at the handles here on the saucepan. Seems to be pretty good quality. I'm gonna lift it up here. They don't get hot at all, and I had it the fuel up pretty high. We'll put it back down and continue our cooking of the oatmeal as you can see the oatmeal is almost finished now the pan has worked really well it has not stuck I mean the side here you see a little bit but it uh, definitely not sticking like I said this is the first time I used the pan so I would hope the non-stick would work well. So there we have our oatmeal. The oatmeal is finished and the handles did not get hot at all. Pan worked quite well, this small saucepan. We're going to move to the frying pan and cook us some eggs. All right, I've got my eggs. Let's put the eggs in there. I was gonna coat the bottom of this pan with vegetable oil, but I chose not to. I wanted to see how well the non-stick coating worked on this pan. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and break the yolks because that's the way I like my eggs. And then I'll let this cook for just a little bit longer and then I'm gonna flip it. 
Okay, I'm going to try and flip these eggs here and see how well that non-stick works. You can see, uh, well, seems to be working quite well there. Ooh, that cooked really quick there. I'm going to turn this down. It is a little bit unstable here, but you got to figure it's a small stove. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this. Okay, I flipped it and as you can see, you know, it did stick there right in the middle, I think where the concentration of the flame was. So I think it was mainly because it burned a little bit, but uh, it might be a good idea to put a little coat of vegetable oil down. And as you can see, my flipping of the egg was not pretty. And conclusion. Alright, thanks for joining me and that concludes my review of